uh, it is open to all of the global business community and we are extremely active in our approach to being proactive with the businesses within Goulburn, regardless of industry. We are actively encouraging new industry to Goulburn, uh, working closely with the Goulburn Moorwari Council, which I'm sure you're all aware we have a great new general manager who is also proactive in encouraging outsiders to look at Goulburn as a place to invest, a place to uh, treat our industry, a place to bring new industry to. So together we're working on some great strategies for that. I am pleased to announce that in the next two days we will be releasing, announcing again through the papers that we're running the Business Excellence Awards this year. So I encourage you all to become involved in that. There will be a, a big awards gala dinner on the 29th of August and we're in the final processes of money down the gala dinner, but in the meantime we'll, we'll have the nominations open. It will all be done online, which makes life easier for both the nominations, the nominees and the judging panel. Uh, we have also a business after hours next Wednesday morning at Australian Wool Handlers. They're going to open up Australian Wool Handlers for us at 7.30 in the morning, not 5pm as I put in the paper. Uh, and they'll take us through light refreshments. So if you would like to come along to that, please um, contact the Goldman Chamber. It's just for catering and safety purposes. If you do have a high vis jacket, please bring that along as well. Uh, Telstra Business are also running a networking breakfast as well, but it's also about the technology that Telstra is bringing in and what we'd like to showcase that. That's, uh, I think, Friday the 22nd of May. Our next awesome committee meeting is the first Tuesday of next month. And our next Goldwyn Chamber of Commerce meeting, the full meeting will be Wednesday the 13th of May at 7pm. We're trialling an evening meeting, a quarterly evening meeting, to try and capture more members um, who are available at 7pm as opposed to 7.30 in the morning. So I do encourage you to contact any of the members, if you're a non-member, and ask how we are being proactive in our business community and what we can do for your business. Without further ado, I'm actually going to introduce Joan Corley of Jigsaw accounting and taxation this morning. Jo has been in Goldwyn for over 10 years. She separates her time between Goldwyn and her Winston Hills Sydney office. Um, she has a wonderful group of staff sitting over with her table at the moment. And this is her, well, what's her topic that now is gone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is a bit loud, is it? Or... <laughs> um, as Prue said, I'm Joan Corley. I am an accountant. Um, we have another accountant speaking a bit later on. So rather than bamboos you all with legislation, um, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today, and that is change. And I'm mainly going to focus on change within the accounting industry. However, you're all business people, and accounting is integral to what you do. So while I'm talking about these things, I want you to think about your business, how change is affecting your business, and how some of the changes in the accounting industry can help your business, perhaps. So let's go on a little journey back in the path. Oh, I do have a clicker. Um, okay, so back in 1987, I started my first job. Um, 28 years ago, and I worked at the Reserve Bank. And there's a picture of the Reserve Bank. And on my first day as a 17 year old, I was very excited to uh, be first of all inducted into the public service, which is something that we certainly don't do anymore in your business. Um, I had to swear on the Bible and swear my allegiance to Australia. <laughs> and then I was taken up to my desk. Now, first of all, that was very exciting. I had my own desk. Coming from you know, a 17-year-old who only just had her own room to actually having my own desk, it was very exciting. And on my desk, there were two things. The first was a telephone. Now, that was extremely exciting because I had my own phone number. For the very first time in my life, I had my own phone number. And it was one of these types of telephone that we used to dial on. And it was used once a day at about 2 o'clock when my boyfriend used to ring me to see how my day was going. I'm sure that was very good use of um, taxpayers' money for me to have that phone. And there was another thing on my desk. Would anyone like to guess what that might have been? 
Very good. It was an ashtray. <laughs> now, for those of you, most of the people here are probably a little older and do remember smoking in the workplace. But if anyone's a bit younger and doesn't remember that, uh, watch Mad Men, and I would suggest you will find exactly what work was like in, even though that's set in the 60s, in the late 80s, early 90s, it was very similar. Smoking in the office was very accepted, and so was drinking at lunchtime and probably during the day. <laughs> and it's probably fair to say that there was a bit of sexual harassment like in Mad Men as well. But um, computers were really something very foreign to us. We did have two computers on the entire floor of the reserve, of my, of the reserve bank that I was on. Um, they were in a special room that was like a sealed room so that you know, nothing got in the way of these computers. And once a day I used to go and sit there for about an hour and type some data into the computer and it would feed up into our computer room which was actually two floors of the reserve bank. Um, from that computer room we had, that ran 24 hours a day, we had 24 hour staff there. I'm sure their job was just to make sure that the dot matrix printer didn't go offline. Um, and the next morning we would come in and all our dot matrix printer uh, reports would be on our desks for us to check to make sure we put our data entry in. It would then go to filing, a special filing department at the Reserve Bank, mind you. Imagine that as your job, filing all day, um, never to be seen again. How simple was life back then? <laughs> Don't you sometimes wish we could go back to those days? I certainly do. Um, if I had nothing to do, I had nothing to do. I couldn't even think of anything to do. We used to read books. We used to knit if we had a <laughs> Again, we weren't looking up Facebook. We weren't doing any of the things that kids probably do today if they're a bit bored. So it was, it was a lot different. So why am I telling you this? Well, first of all, thinking about how technology has changed. 28 years ago may seem a long time, but it really isn't that long ago. You know, we have come such a long way. We now have more power in our phones than we had at the Reserve Bank back in those days, in two, you know, two floors of computer. And the other thing I want to point out is, if I'm talking about technology here, I am not someone who was born in technology. I'm not a Generation Y born with a computer in my hand. I'm someone who grew up without a computer. And if I can make changes in my business to adapt to technology, I think all of you can. So now I want to talk about a concept called digital disruption. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this topic. I'm sure some of you have. But digital disruption is the changes that, um, I'll just read this for you. <laughs> digital disruption refers to changes enabled by digital technologies that occur at a pace and magnitude that disrupt established ways of value creation, social interaction, doing business, and more generally, our thinking. Now, it's fair to say in the last 10 years, the way we do business has changed dramatically. It's not just the way we do business, it's the way we socialise. It's everything in our life. And, you know, if you want to look a bit more into this, have a look at Deloitte's. They do some really interesting research into dis uh, digital disruption. And they uh, put out a paper about two years ago, and they said that there was, they identified 13 industries in Australia that take up 65% of our economy that will be suffering from major digital disruption by 2017. Um, do you believe here? The major ones that they identified were retail, media, finance, professional services, arts and recreation, and real estate. Now, some of those, it's pretty obvious. We know things like media change dramatically. Um, we know that the way we do shopping is quite different. And, you know, within different industries, like within the retail, there's different impacts. Something like entertainment is impacted much more than, say, your supermarket. You know, we're still going to have to go to the supermarket to buy our milk and bread. We can't really order that over the internet at this stage. <laughs> anyway, but one of those industries is, is accounting, um, professional services. It has been disrupted mainly. And I know you're probably sitting here thinking, oh, poor Jo, she's not going to have a job and you know, her life's going to be over because digital disruption has taken away the whole ac accounting function. Um, and there are probably some accounts out there who, who do think that way. But for most of us, we're really quite excited by the challenges ahead of us. 
and how we can change our business to probably provide a better service. Um, I get referred to quite a lot by you know, clients who refer other clients, and I hope that they're not referring me because I can sort through a shoebox of receipts <laughs> and put it into a nice spreadsheet. Like, I'm hoping they're referring me because I know my stuff, and that is what accounting is going to be about in the future. It's going to be about business and developing businesses and not doing those automated tasks. So, some of the changes to the accounting industry. Now, this first started being talked about a few years ago. One of the first things that came up was outsourcing. And before we started getting too technical with things, we were starting to realise we could find a labour cheaper overseas. And so the first thing was that people were starting to use India, Philippines, finding labour at a very cheap rate to do the work that we in Australia do for a more expensive rate. Um, I've never been a particular fan of that. I make a very strong point not to do that within my practice. My, my outsourcing would be between Sydney and Goldman, really, that's it. I will not take my business outside of Australia. But that is a very big trend, particularly within the bigger firms. So if you're using a bigger firm, you might want to know where your accounting is being done. Not that that's a problem, but you just might want to know. But lately, automation is the big thing. We do things over and over again. We go through our bank statements, we reconcile them, we have transactions that are just manually entered over and over again. And this is where technology has been fantastic because we don't have to do that. We can automate. And that saves us so much time. I'll talk about some of the pro uh, products in a minute, but that is our key at the moment. And then we started to innovate. So we said, well, if we can't sit there and do debits and credits now, or they don't take as much time, what are we going to do? And what is going to make our clients want to use us as accountants? Um, so we have to innovate. We have to stop being the accountant and become the trusted business advisor. I'm not a real fan of that topic myself, <laughs> that, that title, the trusted advisor, but that is what we are going to be. If we don't want to be the people that our clients come to to ask questions and to help them with their business, then we're not going to exist anymore. So you do find that there are probably some older accountants out there who are just saying, look, this is all too hard, I'm going to retire, you know, <laughs> and fair enough. But the rest of us are out there saying, what can we do to make things better for our clients and how can we make it easier for them? So that's what we're all aiming to do. And I'm sure Thomas, you're doing the same thing in your business. <laughs> I, know, I know you are. <laughs> So there's a couple of products, and, and, and it's not just the accounting accountants who've had to innovate, it's also the products that we you know, use that have had to innovate. And the best thing that's happened is competition. It's fantastic. So for many years we've had MYB is the main product that most of us have used. And MYB changed slightly over the years, but very, very limited in its changes. So it would be a case of someone saying, look, I really want this function added to my to MYB, so they develop that. But if you have a look at MYB from, say, 10 years ago to maybe three or four years ago, it hadn't changed all that much. And then they went and bought a, um, an, a firm called Banklink. And Banklink have a, um, a program that basically feeds your bank statements straight into their computers, and then that allows us to process your bank transactions automatically. And that has been fantastic because now that's integrated into NYB and then all these other accounting software packages out there have gone and done the same thing. So now, really, unless you have major objections to it, you can save so much time by having your bank account fed straight into your accounting product. It memorises transactions. So, for example, it'll see the word Telstra in your bill payment. It will you'll be able to say Telstra equals telephone and code it automatically. So instead of sitting there and spending all that time putting your bills in, ticking them off and all that, it could probably take you about 10 seconds to process that transaction. We love it. <laughs> and it's accurate as well. That's the other beautiful thing about it. 
Um, the other thing that they're doing, and this is where it's probably interesting for your businesses, whatever they might be, is these products have add-ons, and the add-ons can be extremely helpful for you. So not only can you save time by being using a product like MYB that feeds straight through, or Zero, um, or any of these products all have automatic feeds, but you can then get another add-on that might feed into there, but also helps your business. So, for example, if you're a solicitor, um, you have your LEAP, I think it's called, <laughs> that, that feeds into zero. Um, it, you can actually, if you have LEAP online, you can make a phone call. You actually ring it from your phone, your smartphone from LEAP. It will time how much time you've had and automatically put your time into your timesheet. Nice function to have. I think there's a few accounts who probably wouldn't mind using something like that. Um, we've just taken on a new product called Class Super, and I'm not sure who here has a self-managed super fund, but Class Super incorporates bank fees. Um, it also incorporates fees from your Comsec account or whatever trading account you have. Um, we can give you access to your portal, so you can actually go online straight away and see where your, your self-managed super fund is pretty much real time. So that's a massive advantage to wait until, you know, getting it to us in March the following year where we get to do your accounts and get them out to you by May, you know, nine, year, nine months after the end of the year. You can actually look at it at any point in time, you know where you're at, know where your contributions are up to, where your pension payments are up to, all that sort of stuff. And it saves us time as well, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, I'll probably better start wrapping up. So what can you do? First of all, I would suggest embrace technology. Take the time to learn what's out there. Now, if you have a trusted advisor or an accountant, they'll probably be able to give you a bit of an idea of what you can do. But have a little look online. A lot of these products are, are so cheap, you know, like all these apps are 20 bucks a month or $30 a month. They're, they're priced at, a, at something we can all afford. Um, you know, find out what you can do. I can do it better. Use social media. Now, I know there's always a bit of a, a thing about, I don't want to be on Facebook, I don't want to be using social media. That's where your customers are. If you're not on social media, you're not going to, you're going to miss out on your customers. So, probably a whole other talk. But I really think that you need to start using technology like that. Rethink, innovate, and evolve. The business you're doing today is not going to be the same business you're doing in three or four years' time. You need to look at what you can do better and how you can do it better and how you can change to fit in with what's going on. Um, we often hear people, and you know, retail particularly, oh, you know, the Chamber of Commerce may not be doing enough or the council's not doing enough to make the clients come in and buy our products. What are you doing as, as, the, as the business owner to make them want to come in, or what are you doing to access new markets? We can access, we can do accounts for people anywhere in Australia. In fact, we could probably do accounts for people anywhere in the world. So we don't have to be limited to Goulburn or Sydney or Canberra. You know, technology allows us to access new markets, and so we should be doing that and looking how we can. And then you need to be prepared to make mistakes. It's going to happen. You might say, let's try this. It doesn't work. Try something else. Okay, it's going to happen. We've tried it. We picked up a product a couple of years ago, spent a fair bit of money on it, trying to become a paperless office. It just didn't work. And we got to the stage you know, let's not even worry about that. Let's just let it go and we'll go on to something else and try a different product. But don't stick your head in the sand. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, I'm a big Google, YouTube type person. Um, you know, if you have any issues with anything, I think you can always solve it on Google. But um, if anyone has some time and wants to get a bit excited about things, Simon Sinek is a, um, he does some TED Talks, and you can see them on YouTube, and he talks about the why. And, you know, as a business owner, you need to know why you're in business. What is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? And if it's just to make money, you're probably not in the right business. So if you want a bit of inspiration, 
listen or done watch his YouTube talks. Um, he's, it, they're you know, pretty simple, but start thinking about your why. What is it that makes you do what you do? And how can you, if you really, really love doing what you're doing and you're passionate about it, you will evolve your business and you will survive. I think that's about it. Have I done it in time? <laughs> Thank you.